Thank you. Um, we were hoping to have uh, Poetry International here today, but we came very close, but they couldn't make it. So now I'll have to torture myself with uh, the Pecha Kucha method we are torturing you with. Um, we uh, do a project on Erasmus PC to publish a, a new city poem every Sunday. So each Sunday there's a new city poem from somewhere in the world. And I would like to take you on a tour uh, around the world showing these, these poems. When I was a boy, everybody wanted to be a fireman or, or something else. I wanted to be a poet, so probably this project is a compensation for me ending up being a planner. Um, this is one, maybe one of the oldest examples of city poems. Alhambra, of course, is, is filled with poems and poetry and its very important function uh, in the experience of the surroundings. Uh, but it's picked up nowadays as well. This is where our project started. Um, we saw a poem on the wall in, in Delft, uh, opposite the station. And it's not a formal project, but somebody decided to give his poem, or her poem, to the, to the public domain. Um, so, we don't know who it is. This is the... Uh, we've heard a lot of, about this one. But we published this one as well. One of the shining examples of, of poetry in the, in the city, in the, in the urban domain. Um, this is one I like very much. It's a, a poem actually from the film Amélie. And um, somebody took this poem and wrote it on the wall in, uh, in Newcastle. In the, in the film Amélie, it, uh, Amélie sees it on the wall in Paris in its fiction, but now it became reality. And uh, it gets many hits on our website, so uh, people are really very fond of this poem. This is a poem in Budapest. Uh, it's called Edmondo da Jano Chakra, it means one sentence about tyranny. And it's uh, one sentence, but it's about 200 lines uh, talking about what tyranny does to your daily life. About not only the, the executions, but also the, uh, hearing the, the voice of your child being called out and then being scared. This is one in Tokyo, you were talking about translation, uh, Paul, where are you? Um, we haven't found a, a translator yet, but we like the poem anyway, so we published it. So if there's anybody who speaks Japanese, please come to me. Uh, this is a very spontaneous poem uh, by a New York PD officer. Uh, it was hanged on the, on the fence around Ground Zero, just after the 9-11 the attacks. And it, he writes, take the road that leads to love, not the one to hate. Hate is what took these buildings down. And uh, goes on. Uh, and we find that also this poem gets many, many hits. So there's formal poems, there's informal poems. This is one in a city called Newtown. It's somewhere in Australia near Sydney. Um, and uh, another example. Maybe go to the next one. Um, very inspiring project in Leiden, where it's a formal project um, of publishing. They've published 101 poems on the walls of Leiden in 10 years' time. Um, and their aim is to, not so much to make the city a better place, but more to um, show all the different cultures uh, around the world. So these are poets from, from many, many different cities that are presented in the, in the city center of Leiden. This is a picture actually by Yasha. Um, uh, and shows another project of uh, how you can integrate poetry in the, in the public domain. And there's another one uh, which has a, a similar line that you can only read in the, in the mirror of the, of the water. This is um, a project with Jenny Halter. She does many projects of projecting poems in the urban domain, and this one is in London. It's a poem by Darwish, uh, a Palestinian uh, poet. Um, and uh, she did many projects in, in London, in, in New York, uh, actually making the buildings part of the poetry. Uh, one of our favorites, Richard Brotigan, who wrote the uh, legendary uh, Trout Fishing in America, and um, uh, one of his short poems, which is in the pavement of San Francisco. <coughs> and this is also, again, part of a series of, of poetry, um, which you might not see while walking on the pavement, or you, you might stop and have a look. Or one in uh, Horn, a uh, poem by Jan Merckx, which kind of integrates in, in nature maybe and uh, some of the letters have, have fallen out already and there's a bird sitting on one of them. Not the poem that um, Paul uh, uh, took a picture of. Actually we, we researched the poem because we not only want to show the pictures but also provide background information about the poem and, and the poet. And this one is an interesting one because it's uh, an internet poem. 
and nobody knows who wrote it. There are many people who claim that they wrote it. So actually, we stand a chance of being sued by somebody who is very active on the internet, uh, suing everybody who claims that this poem is anonymous. Um, this is the, what you could call the national poem of, uh, of Suriname. And uh, there are many people from Suriname living in Rotterdam, so Rotterdam did a project um, putting this, this very important poem for them on the wall. This is a stencil artist in Paris called Mystique. Nobody knows who she is. She's a female artist and she works with a stencil technique so it fades away very easily. And each year she adopted a different arrondissement in Paris. She's done it for 20 years now and she's uh, to the 20th arrondissement. And everybody's what's one, wondering what happens next year because she ran out of arrondissements. This one is in Istanbul. Um, unfortunately, I don't know who wrote it, but I, I wanted to present it anyway. And I think there's a last one in Tel Aviv. This is actually a poem that you can read both ways. You can read it horizontally, you can read it ver vertically. I've asked the poet um, uh, who sent me the picture to make a translation, and it'll be on our website uh, one of these uh, next uh, coming Sundays. So, my interest lies in public domain. The public domain is much wider than just the streets. It's, it's also the, the text messages or the beer mats or the very good examples from, from Antwerp or, the, or maybe the, the podcast. <coughs> public domain should be more about interaction, in, in my view. And city poems cause interaction. Uh, I think a city poem makes a wall more than just a wall. It makes you think about what's written on it. It makes you stand still and it makes uh, you interact with um, on the wall on the or on the beer mat or on whichever. <coughs>